Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk, and if you haven't guessed it, we're back on with the Amstrad. Now, I have been having a bit of a fiddle with this thing off camera. Um, made a few discoveries, sorted a few things out, sorted a, a few um, issues out that I wanted to uh, get to the bottom of on this thing. Uh, what I've done so far, I've actually put it back um, to using the internal graphics on the um, on the computer rather than trying to use an external VGA card. Because I don't actually think that's the issue. Um, in fact, it's an, it's an odd one this. Um, I actually think the computer is basically working. It's just it's um, a graphic output um, issue. Now, I did kind of think, could it be um, an issue with the RAM? Because this uses um, one meg of DRAM on the main board. But you can disable that and use SIMRAM instead. So I actually tried that. I actually took, I used my um, dental, rather than take the whole computer apart, I actually used my dental pick there and managed to get all, um, what was it, um, 12 uh, DRAMs out of there. We've got eight um, 256k by 4 bit and four 256k by 1 bit um, DRAMs. Now the reason I removed them. Is uh, the 256k by 4 bit are nice Siemens DRAMs? Um, I've never ever seen them have any major issues. The 256k by 1 bit, uh, which is basically used as the parity RAM um, on that configuration, was actually the old MT um, branded RAM. Now, anyone that's uh, repaired C64s knows um, the old MT branded RAM seems to be one of the ones that's failing more than anything, any other type of DRAM. You're of that age. So I thought. It you know, possibly could be um, that. Anyway, I pulled all that DRAM out. I actually tested it in the um, Speedmaster. And it's all tested absolutely fine. But it was the right faff to get out of there. So I thought rather than put it back in, I reconfigured the main board using the dip switches to take um, a couple of one megabyte SIMs. I actually put two one megabyte SIMs. Again, nine pin parity SIMs. So perfectly compatible with this. It does have to have um, parity RAM. Um, and it's exactly the same. I mean, the computer is actually getting up to where it was getting up. Um, but we've still got that exa exact same issue with the um, scrambled graphics. One good thing is I'm fairly confident this keyboard does work with this computer. The issue was the key lock was locked. And despite me having a big pile of um, keyboard keys, I actually don't have one that fits this. Fortunately, what I discovered was um, when the key lock is locked, it actually that's closed contact. So it was simply a matter of just disconnecting uh, the connector that goes to the key switch. That disabled the key switch, and now um, this keyboard is actually responding to the computer. Uh, the num lock uh, light goes off and on when it should do. Um, scroll lock, things like that, caps lock. And um, it actually responds to enter commands now. So like I say, I am fairly confident this keyboard will actually work properly with this computer. And I'll just show you what I've um, found so far. If we actually boot the computer back up. I'll get you on my um, screen up there. Ooh, there we are. I'll get you up there. I'm sorry you're a bit... Um, a bit skew, but it won't really matter just for a quick um, view, will it? Right, so I power the computer up now. I better switch, plug it back in first, or else it's not going to come on, is it? So I'll plug the computer back in. I will switch on. And just watch what we get on the screen. Now, again, we've got all that crashed, but can you see that cursor there? It's moving. Have you noticed we also get three beeps now, not the four beeps, and that's since I changed the actual RAM, so I don't know whether there was a RAM issue or not, but we was getting four beeps before, since I've changed that we're only getting three, but look here, now it's all corrupted, but I think behind all the corruption we've actually got something coming up on screen. It's probably telling us that the other you know, changed the um, CMOS batteries or something like that, but it definitely looks like we're actually getting something. And if I actually hit enter now, you see the cursor move from there to there, and we've got other text come up, hit it again, and even if I put a floppy disk in the drive, 
It won't boot from it. I don't know if the floppy drive actually works or not yet, but if I hit that, the green lights actually come up on and it is trying to seek that disc. And if you look, it actually changed again on the screen. So, so I don't think the computer is like dead dead. We just have a graphical corruption on it. But I can't really go much further with the computer in the uh, in the position that it's in. Um, well, I'm going to basically, we're going to have to take this thing completely apart, get the boards out and actually get down to what's actually going on here. I mean, it could be a little bit of corrosion on something, it could be something a lot more serious, but we won't know until we actually get um, cracked down. Plus, there's a couple of other things I want to do, really. I'm quite happy with the um, power supply as it's running, but that fan, um, it's getting on my nerves. I'm going to see if I can perhaps take that fan apart and clean it and see if I can quiet it down a bit. If not, I think I'll see if I can find perhaps a, a more modern fan I could put in there, which has got a decent um, flute throughput of air, but it's perhaps a little bit quieter. That has to come out anyway because um, my capacitors actually have arrived now, so uh, while that's out, I can strip the fan out of it and have a look at that fan, and um, I can actually put those correct capacitors in there. But like I said, that's for another time. First, I want to see if I can get this um, board to actually come up, boot, and actually display something that's uh, meaningful. So let me uh, let me grab an appropriate screwdriver. Where are all my appropriate screwdrivers gone? Hmm. Oh, 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 that's a flat blade. And that won't work either. Where have all my Phillips screwdrivers gone? Ah, oh, you'll work. Right, now I did put a couple of screws in here just to hold it. Plus this is, gives us a good opportunity to clean the case and clean all the muck and rubbish out of here as well. In fact, what we will do, see when we're going on in here, we'll put the old uh, anti-static on. Make sure that's nice and tight on my uh, wrist because that actually does have to press down on your skin. Little metal bit under there, else it's not going to work. There we go, that's better, that's a bit tighter. That's actually holding on my uh, wrist now. Right, so we've got that free, we've got one screw in the back there that I put in just to hold the power supply in place. I need to get that back out. We can get the, uh, the power supply to slide back out. There we go. We'll re disconnect everything. At least we've got the proper power supply working and everything now, so uh, we can do diagnostics once we get this thing um, all apart. So that's good. Let's disconnect the floppy drive. There we are. We can get that uh, power supply out of the way for the time being. Put that over there. Yeah, that's nice and safe and out of the way. Move my discs. Have a slurp of coffee. As for the hard drive, I have actually uh, did apply power to the hard drive and it does spin. Um, so we may, I don't know if we'll do it in this video or the next video, but we may actually connect this up to one of my um, bridge PCs and see if we can get any um, information, any data off it. Because it does look um, like it might be viable. It certainly didn't sound bad when I fired it up anyway, it didn't have any horrible noises or anything. So um, it is hopeful that that might be okay. That's the lead that will go to the um, batteries. keep little things like that there's loads of like little because it's all a plastic case these Amstrads have loads of like little grounding cables and earth straps and things like that which need to be um, kept um, kept aware of that goes between the um, front chassis here with the hard drive and the floppy drive on it on the case of the actual power supply so um, 
I'm saying that out now so when I forget I can play this video back and uh, find out where things go. That is one great thing about uh, making videos and kind of why, the reason why I make the videos the way that I make them. It's not just because um, I'm entertaining you guys, it's also because I can use it then as a reference when I'm putting something back together and I can't remember where it come from. Hmm. Right. Oh no, we've got another screw there. One in the centre there. I better open that pot and I can um, drop all that when I'm in. And I'm keeping all my Amstrad bits in the same uh, in the same pot. Righty ho! Now can we lift this out? I'll disconnect that floppy connect cable. There, and that's out. And there's something at the front there that's holding it into the uh, case still. You have to be super, super careful as well because all this plastic will be getting very, very fragile by this um, by this age. Right, now what else is holding? We've got another ground strap there. That actually goes off the hard drive. Uh, actually... Yeah, someone's actually taken one of the screws. Yeah, I don't like that. I think I'm going to disconnect that from um, the main board down there. So we've got that out. I think we can now lift the floppy drive and the uh, hard drive out. Got a cable there which goes straight onto the hard drive. That's the hard drive LED on the front. So we'll uh, again we'll unplug that. Then we've just got the IDE cable there going uh, off, which would have gone to the controller. So I'll put that to one side again so it's out of harm's way. Okie dokie. Right now, let's see what we have to do to get this um, main board out. It is quite dirty in here actually. So I have a feeling this may have like stayed in a shed or a garage or something like that for some time. Right, we can unplug that cable there which goes to floppy drive B. Now it looks like this, like the older um, Amstrads, doesn't use um, IBM standard for the floppies. It uses the actual Shutgar um, proper standard because we don't have a twist in the cable for the floppy drive. So the floppies will be addressed to floppy drive 1, floppy drive 2. That probably explains why when I uh, quickly tried using just a standard PC external floppy drive which are obviously set to DF1 rather than DF0 um, I couldn't get it to work, I couldn't get it to um, read the disk. Right, so I think we're up to the point where we can lift this board which is um, the main CPU board and it is pretty filthy actually, it's disgusting. Um, so it all needs a really good clean. There's dirt and filth all throughout this computer. It is pretty manky actually. So I'm pretty certain it spent some time either in a store, a storage locker or um, a garage or something like that. We can disconnect that which is our PC speaker. Right, now we're about ready, I think, to get this main board out. We've got... One screw. Another screw there. Another one there. Another one there. See, this board's going to lift now. This board is actually fixed basically with a connector to the board that's underneath. I 
think with all those screws out, I should be able to uh, separate the two. Make sure I haven't missed anything. Take that piece of uh, protective plastic off, make sure that goes back on. I spy a bodge wire there. That's obviously a factory uh, bodge wire. Now, do I have to push those in to release? I think I might have to. squeeze. There we go, that's one, two, three. Right. That's loose there, but there's still something holding it. There we go. And that last connect just popped back in. There we go, that's three. That's free. Oh, volume control. Got it. Volume control off. Now I think we should be able to. There we go, that's better. That's the um, main board now. Excellent. I can't see anything that looks too bad on there. There's some capacitors, but I very much doubt that those are going to be um, faulty. Mouse port, keyboard port. There's the CPU up on the top there. Right. Um, there's the RAM that I've obviously changed. That's where the original DRAM would have gone, in there. We may try swapping back to that yet. I'm not 100% sure. Let me get that one out of the way. I'll put that on top of the power supply over there where it's not going to get damaged. Let's turn our attention to down here. Right, um, let's see what we can do. Because we're going to have to take everything out of here to clean the case. Like I said, it's absolutely filthy. But for now, I just want to get the, um, the main board out of here so we can have a look at it. Because this is basically what's got the VGA card built into it. And the serial and parallel. Now, I don't know where the I.O. is on this. But I'm guessing that this is basically just ISA bus um, on here. That's interesting as well. Here, if you look on the main board, that's where um, originally it was going to have um, an onboard um, hard drive controller. But Amstrad could never get it to work properly, so they abandoned it in the end. And I believe originally they went with an RLL um, controller and hard drive. For some reason, this has got an IDE one, and I think it's original, so perhaps after a while they went over to IDE rather than um, RLL. I'm not 100% sure there, but you can see definite that's actually where um, the onboard hard drive controller would have gone if they had um, ever got round to and implemented it. It looks like RLL, but um, perhaps it wasn't, perhaps it was something else. But I do see quite a bit of corrosion and horrible ick on that main board at the back there. I think that might be where our issues lie, to be honest. Don't need that in there. can see what I think is a fuse at the back there which looks very 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 corroded unplug that they didn't skimp on their screws Amstrad they certainly um, liked to put plenty of screws in this stuff
it's actually nice to um, work on a computer which has got damage that isn't caused by uh, battery corrosion or leaky capacitors actually. Well, we've already had leaky capacitors in the uh, main power supply but the actual main board itself doesn't got like a load of trace damage on or anything like all the ones I've looked at previously, well recently, which we haven't had a lot of luck with. Yeah, we've got definite signs of corrosion down here. Um, but corrosion from damp, not from um, leaking batteries if we look there, all that's gone rusty down at the bottom there, um, there's a bit of rust on top, oh, that should clean up though, let's put that to one side as well, let's see how far we are off of getting this main board, there's one more screw I think there. I suppose technically this is the daughter board, isn't it? The um, other one's the main motherboard. Right, let's see if this will lift out. You got one more screw? Yep. One more screw back there. Right. I'll get hold of that. Let's see whether this, there we are. So I'm wondering whether this, if we look at all the corrosion on here, and that there, which is incredibly corroded on the top, is actually the VGA ROM. That's the character ROM um, for the v, onboard VGA. That could indeed be the issue. Right, let's get... that out of the way, that's going to need a damn good cleaning and I'll have to take the rest of the ports off it. But this is what I really want to look at at the moment. In fact what I'll do, um, just bear with me a sec and I will get the camera reset up and then we can have a really good look at this board. I have a feeling this may be where the um, issue actually lies so uh, back in us. Right okay that's better. Um, I honestly think this is where the problems lie. Um, we can see here we've got our paradise. In fact, let me get my uh, strap back on. We've got paradise VGA set there. Now that's the I think I believe the character ROM for the VGA, and that's actually quite corroded on the top there. We've got corrosion on a fuse there, but I believe that's only to do with serial. Um, so I don't think that's going to be a major problem, but. There's corrosion round here, and there's all this, what I think, it's like plaster dust or something like that. Uh, so I think first things first, uh, we'll give it a bit of a clean, so you can get all this muck and rubbish off there, and then at least we can see what we're uh, actually looking at. So let's have a, give it a quick... I mean, most of that's coming off really easily. I mean, we couldn't even make out what those were. I think they're only to do with the serial anyway, so I don't think they're a major... Uh, yeah, that's the serial port there, that's the parallel port. You know, VGA's there, so what's that chip there? We've got, um... Is that LA639... Give the rest of the board a quick uh, dust off. Still got lots of. Oh, there we go, that's better, that's got that out there. Right. Aha! I think I've spotted our old favourite there as well. Let me get you down. I. What I'm thinking, well, let me get this. Dear me, it's. Yeah. Clean my uh, bench off a little bit, get all that, it's like sand or something like that it had in it. There we go, that's better. A little bit of discoloration round here, but it's not too bad. Um, 
I have a feeling we have got a RAM issue, but I think um, it's the video RAM on here that might be the issue. Well, we've got a few, actually, to be honest, we've got a few things we need to investigate on here. Um, one's that ROM there. Um, that could be faulty, that could be corrupting characters or something like that. I, th I believe that's how the VJ works, that um, basically all the characters and everything are stored in a ROM like that. What's your main uh, Paradise VGA chipset? Um, I'm not sure about that, but that does seem to be very much linked with the um, VGA output there. So we could have a faulty IC there, but I don't think that would stop you know, when we put an external card in, um, it not displaying. But what I'm wondering, either something wrong with the ROM. Again, I'm not 100% sure if that would cause an issue, but the RAM could. If we've got a stuck bit um, in one of the video RAM, uh, that could be causing the issue we're actually seeing on screen. And I think if that's stuck, it could be actually affecting one of the um, addresser data lines on the ISA bus there. And that would also mean that when we put a VGA card in, that would be having basically the same issues and wouldn't work. Um, I don't know why when I tried disabling it that wouldn't actually disable this but perhaps that's not how it um, actually works on the Amstrad and we've still been unable to find a um, repair um, manual for this or even to be honest the operations manual so I can look up the beat codes I'm running a little bit blind but here's my thought um, I've just noticed these are MT uh, RAM chips now, MT RAM chips can be notoriously flaky, as I mentioned before. It wouldn't be a major, major job. To, we've only got eight of them there, so um, they're probably, what are they going to be? Like um, 256K uh, by eight, something like that. Yeah, that would be that would work out for a VJ, wouldn't it? Um, 256K by eight. Um, I'm tempted to pull them out of the board put some sockets in because I don't like MT RAM I, I have had issues on systems that's used it before but at least if I was to socket all them up and a RAM chip even if that isn't the fault and a RAM chip fails in the future it'll make it a lot easier to um, swap in some new RAM and while they're out I can um, quickly test them I've probably got something I could actually stick in there that's tested as a good replacement as well if I wanted to so um, I think that might be the first thing to try um, is pull out all that RAM there because that's going to be fairly easy. It should desolder. In fact, let's get the um, desoldering station warming up, and we'll pull all this um, empty RAM out of there. I'll add some sockets so we don't have to solder it back in. We'll put them on the tester and see if any of them are bad, and if they are, I think that may be our issue. If not, and all that's good. Um, I think we might be moving on to that ROM there and I'm wondering um, possibly if I pulled that ROM out and then tried it with an external video card if indeed the RAMs are right and it's looking like it may be the ROM that's the issue that would actually stop like, like something being stuck on there and it's holding an address line um, higher, lower it's going to be an issue like that I think with this but I think my first because I know that MT RAM uh, can be a bit flaky um, and it looks like it is, I keep thinking RAM error, whenever I see that on the screen what it's doing, it kind of makes me think it's a RAM error. Um, and we know it's not the system RAM, we've tried swapping that out, so, I said video RAM is the first um, port of call, that's the first place I'm going to um, go on this. I'm hoping actually, I think this is probably just a uh, two layer board, so this might be quite easy to get out. Let us, uh, let us have a see. Let's give that a little bit longer. I don't think we're quite there yet. Um, let's get some flux out as well because a little bit of fresh flux always makes life easier. Some fresh soldering, I'll get the um, soldering iron on as well. So, we may have to add a little bit of fresh um, solder to these just to get them to come out. Put a little bit of, little bit of fresh flux on the board. 
There we go. Yes, nice and hot now. Let's go in again and try that again. Some of these are going to be drickier than others because they'll be on um, ground planes. That come out. These are actually coming out fairly easy by the look of it. Let me just swap over onto my other glasses. I can see these little bits a little bit easier. That's better. Oops, sorry about that. Um, I had to change my battery. But well, anyway, still on the same chip. These are all coming out fairly easily. Right, let's have a look at that now. There's one there that didn't quite do. There we go, that's better. Got a couple bent over there. Let me just... Uh, get something to straighten them legs up with. There they are. They had slightly bent a couple of the legs over when they um, soldered them in place. Well, let's have a look, see how well the other one that's going to uh, come out now. Not looking bad. In fact, it looks really manky around that chip. There's like deposits all down this side of that chip. The rest of them all look really quite clean. Um, right, have I got some more? Ah, there it is. I'll get my uh, dental probe and we're just going to very gently go under it and give it a quick. There we go. Didn't even use any force then, really. Again, we'll go under that side. There we go, that side lifted up, and that chip's free. There we are. That's come out of the board without any um, damage, but yeah. Unless it's just like permanent marker pen or something, but there's definitely like black all along that line of that I see there hmm so MT4067-12 let me just look that up um, back in, I think it's probably 256k by uh, one bit but I'm just going to uh, quickly look it up so uh, back right I've looked it up and it's 64 um, K by 4 bits so um, two of them is um, 64 K by 8 bits so we've got 64 K um, 64 K 128 K yeah it's 256 K in 64 K by 4 bit um, pieces I'm really tempted just before I pull any of the other ICs out because I don't I've seen ICs where there's been like black goo on them like that before and they've been bad I'm really really tempted just to um, pull the Speedmaster all out get it set up and just quickly check that one um, DRAM before we go any further so uh, if you'll just bear with me a sec we'll get that set up and I'm going to test that one DRAM before we go um, any further so uh, back in a sec Right, okay, I've dug the old, trusty old Packard bell out. Uh, I've got that connected up to the um, Speedmaster there. So what we want to do is we want to use chip test on here. So we type in... This is old MS-DOS software. This is uh, basically running um, Windows 98, but set up to um, boot into um, the DOS environment. 
Right, so we want to um, DRAM library, so we'll go down DRAM library, we'll take our um, DRAM we want to test, and drop that in the Speedmaster, okay, and then we will um, press a key, we'll select a device, and we know that it's a 64K by um, 4 because that's what we uh, we looked up. So we'll go on 64 by 4 which is 18 pins which is what that is. Hit that. Then we'll go to um, test device. Press enter. And it's telling us to check price and selection. Now that is definitely in the right place. I'll just uh, whittle it about just in case. But when you're putting um, testing DRAM in here, it always goes to the top there, pin one. So pin one up to the top of the ZIF socket there. That's exactly right. Press the key. We'll try um, selecting the device again, just in case we got it wrong. 64K by 4 there. Press enter. And that's definitely what it told me it is. We'll go test device again. Hit enter. Check device position and selection. Right. Just to show that the test is working. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I think I have got some good tested DRAMs here. I've got some good tested ones in here. Um, those are oh, oh, those are the wrong ones. Those are hundred. They're two fifty six k by four bit. We want um, sixty four k by four bit. Just uh, bear with me a second. I will just see if I can find one and we can um, test that. So back in. A right. Okay, we're back. And I have actually found one. Uh, these are also MT branded, but um, if I put this one in. like that test device we look marching ones through 64k marching zeros through 64k uh, RAM is okay we'll pop that one back out put that away and we try that one that we um, took out of the Amstrad mainboard in and we'll try that again it, so it, can't, it cannot even um, see that it's a DRAM. I think we may have found our culprit straight away now. <laughs> it's not usually that easy and it might not fix it yet. But I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick a socket um, to replace just that one DRAM. I'll stick that because what, si what um, speed is this? This is 120. The ones I've got are um, 100, so they're actually quicker. Um, that should work fine. I will stick one of them in. Um, if it works, I'll probably end up socketing all the rest, and we might swap them all out for the um, hundreds. So, you know, I've got quite a few of them, and if another one of these fails, like, so at least we've got some replacements then. So, I will do that. I will quickly add a socket to that board, and um, we'll stick that DRAM in there, and we can give it a quick test. So, uh, back in a Right, okay, um, I've got a suitable socket here, nice dual white one as well, so that should be um, absolutely perfect. First thing I'm going to do, I'm just seeing if I'm going to get all that gunk that's come out of that um, old DRAM off the board. One of my favourite cotton buds. These are um, bamboo cotton buds, they're really really good um, if you can find them. I get these from the local um, cheapy shop. They're a pound for um, a massive big little 300 in a box like that. But as I've said, they're all made out of bamboo. So the shaft there is bamboo. The only thing is you can't press on too hard with them. But the end there is actually made out of bamboo as well. And it doesn't all fluff up like um, the cotton, actual cotton buds do. Um, it's a lot better for actually cleaning boards and stuffing. Like I say, it doesn't seem to all um, fluff up like the other um, cotton buds do. Anyway, let's get in there and let's see if we can give that... Oh, that'll come straight off that. 
I don't know whether it's corrosive or not that um, whatever's I think it's probably spewed out of that DRAM it's certainly something you can see there it's come off on my um, Q-tip there we go that's not looking bad around there now so we will uh, insert a socket One hole there. Let me just try and reposition those capacitors a little bit. That's in. That's there. We go. And I'll just hold it on this side. So I've got my finger under the actual um, new socket there and I'll just lightly tack it and then we can solder it in place proper. And I'm getting all my wires all crossed up and twisted together which you don't want. Right, let's see if we can just tack that in place quickly. Nice fresh solder on my iron. That one. Let's quickly tack that one. And that one again. Okay, that should hold it. We can go in and solder it properly. Just make sure that, that socket's flat before we go and um, solder it any further. Raised up a little bit on that side, so just put a little bit of pressure on it, and I'll just heat them, heat them two pins back up. Make sure that's nice and flat. Check that again. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that now. That's nice and flat on the board now. Then we can go in and we can solder the rest. Of those pins. That's them. Let's go down this side. The board's really nice and clean. It's such um, so nice to work on a board like I said that isn't full of um, either leaking capacitors or um, battery corrosion. That's just beautifully and clean. This board, right? That's nice. I'm happy with that. Let's give that a little bit of a quick clean with some um, PCB cleaner. We'll get the um, old scrubbing toothbrush. Clean that off. Finish off with a Q-tip. There we go. And that from the other from that side doesn't even look like you've um, we've done any work. Nice and nice and clean and tidy there. So we've now got a socket mounted where that um, faulty DRAM was. Let's take that DRAM that we just tested. I say it's not the same speed, but it's actually faster than the old ones on here. So that shouldn't be a problem. You couldn't use, say, what are these? These are like 120s. Um, you couldn't use like a 150 as a replacement because it would be slower than the rest of the RAM and that would cause issues. But um, I don't think there'll be an issue using one that's slightly faster. At least not for testing anyway. And I said we may even swap all of them for those. At least we could test. We may even still have another bad DRAM or something like that. This is just like a super quick test. In fact, what I'll do now, I'll just get the rest of the board all set up. 
I won't bother putting it in the case or anything. I'm just going to try and lash it up on the desk here. Connect the power up to it. Connect the, the monitor and everything up to it. And just see if that's made any difference at all to the um, display. So I'll get that set back up. And uh, we can get right back. And we'll see if that's made a difference. So uh, back in. Right, as you can see, I've basically got as much as I can set back up on the bench. I don't know whether I need to connect up any of the other bits, but I don't think I do. I think I could probably get away with this. Uh, we're not going to get a beep from the speakers. The speaker's still in the case. Uh, but we may get something up on the display which is a little bit more legible. So what I will do, I will get you, actually, up on the screen. Might even be able to get you um, so you can see the screen properly this time. There we go. That's actually not a bad view of the screen. Right. Um, I've got the, the power supply hooked up to the board, but I've kind of had to like hang it off to one side because it's not really designed to um, work like this, just sat on the bench. But um, let's see if that's made any difference at all. So I will switch on now. And nothing come on because I haven't plugged the power supply in. Let me unplug the um, Speedmaster because that's still plugged in. Let's try and where that plug's gone because my bench is getting a real mess and I can't reach anything. Right, let's try that again. So we've got the power supply plugged back in this time. Everything is connected up. Let's try switching on again. Power supply's come on. The monitor's... Oh, look at that. Right, we're not there. Please wait. Errors. Fal faulty floppy disk controller or disk drive. We are, we've still got graphical errors. I think we've probably still got some more of that MT RAM that's bad. But look at this. We have never seen this before, have we? That is fantastic. Um, right. Let me just power off. Let me connect the keyboard up. We might be able to get a floppy drive connected up, but the way I've got it all hooked up like this. Why can't we see if we can just connect a floppy drive up and see what happens when we stick a disc in it with a keyboard connected. And I can't guarantee we're going to get anything from it, but let's, let's have a play. We've got this far, we've made progress. Plug that in there. Right, so I've basically I've got the um, I've got a floppy disk there, the floppy drive actually hooked back up to the computer with the power. I'm going to connect the keyboard. Oops, let me let. I bet you feel really seasick when you watch my videos, don't you? Consider I I did at one point work in video production. I haven't remembered very much of what I used to do. Right, there we go. You're back on the screen now. Um, I will grab the keyboard. So I'm curious to see if we're going to actually get some proper keyboard uh, response this time. We'll get the keyboard plugged in. Right, that's the keyboard reconnected. I will switch on again. Now I don't think we're going to get it to actually boot to a disk. I have a feeling there's something actually wrong with that floppy drive, but I'm just curious to see how far we can go. I heard a seek from the floppy then. Oh right, that's more like it. So let's see what we've got here now. Please insert a system disk into drive A and press a key. I've got DOS. I've got a DOS uh, five disk here, so. Let's put that in the drive. Let's press a key. Right, uh, non-system disk or disk error. So I think we've actually got an iffy floppy drive there because I know that these disks work. I'll just try a different version of DOS just in case, but um, I'm pretty sure all these disks actually do um, work. I've got DOS 3.3 here, which I 
think might have been what this originally um, shipped with. It could have been DOS 4. I thought it might have been DOS 4 that these um, originally shipped with, but it should be able to boot DOS 3.3. I'll try this disk in. But like I said, I'm set, pretty sure it's probably just a nifty disk drive. Let's try Control Alt Delete. Disk boot failure. So, no, it's not. We're not there yet, and we still have, like I said, lots and lots of um, glitches on the graphics. I will turn off at that, but that is progress. We've actually got something that's legible on screen now. We've not had that before. So I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to um, put sockets in for all the rest of that um, video RAM. I will test what we've got there. We've obviously got some more faulty video RAM and I will use that RAM that I've um, got which is tested and I will put that in there and then we will see how far we've got. But you'll have to wait for the next video for that because um, I'm going to release this now. Show you uh, what progress we've got up to so far. So like I said, I'm dead pleased we've made progress and I'm pretty certain now we can actually get this computer fully, fully working. I think it is just a RAM fault. So like I said, I will um, probably do that off camera, I'll swap out, you've seen me do one, you, it's only a case of repeating the same thing another seven times. Um, I'll get that swapped out and in the next video we'll take it from there. We may, if all that's working, then finish off with doing a bit of a clean up, finish cleaning all the, uh, finish cleaning all the boards up because this main board is absolutely filthy, it's full of dust. Um, I want to basically check everything, reseat anything. We've still got some work to do on that bottom board. I can see there's corrosion on that fuse. Obviously we've got to do them DRAMs and we'll do a little bit of extra cleaning up and um, checking out on there. And then we can start putting this thing back together. We can look at that floppy drive, see if we can get that floppy drive working. Um, and we can have a look at that hard drive, um, see if we can get it working in this system. Or if we can't, we can um, try and see if we can fire it up in one of the bridge PCs. Um, I have managed to find online the Amstrad setup utility for the BIOS because this is basically like the original IBM and some of the other systems that I, um, I like playing with like my um, apricots and stuff they don't actually have the BIOS that you can boot from to from the keyboard you actually have to uh, use a system disk uh, with a setup program on it to be able to configure the BIOS um, so I've got that on my um, main PC, my main laptop, so I'll have to uh, get that over onto um, a USB stick, get it over onto the um, Packard Bell, which has got a floppy drive in it, I can copy that to a disk, and we can use that for um, trying to set the BIOS up. So anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now. I hope you enjoyed this uh, little update on the project and the fact we've actually made some success. So I will say thanks for watching and goodbye.